Greetings and welcome to Jeffco Films. Today we're going to talk about a 1982 slasher film. Well, it does have some killing in it, at least. A lot of filler. I don't know if they want to call it character development. I'm going to call it filler. There's literally 20 minutes of them at a carnival just wandering around doing shit. 20 minutes of this film is that. Well, let's review Death Screams. The movie starts out with Ted and Angie down by the river on his motorcycle fooling around. And they're gonna have sex, but they're waiting for the train to get there because once it does, it's gonna shake the ground and make sex that much better. I guess if you're not good at having sex, you gotta think outside the box. Well, the train's the only thing that does, and when it does come, they get strangled. You don't really hear a death scream because, you know, they're being strangled, and then they just get kicked into the river along with the bike, and they float down. We get some opening credits. In town at the local grocery stop, which is the size of a convenience store, the sheriff is talking to Arch about the missing employee. They haven't seen him, and he wants to fire him, but he's not too impressed with Lily, so if he does find him, tell him he's late for work. Lily, can't you do anything right? At the local baseball field, they're clearly just having a practice because there's no actual game structure going on, but the parents are still clapping. I guess their kids did participate, so... Good on them. Everybody's gathering up all the supplies and stuff and doing an inventory of some of the missing bases they don't have. And then they decide, let's go to the restaurant and drink, leaving behind bats and balls. These kids talk about going to college soon. Ramona, the flirty waitress, flirts with them, of course, because that's her deal. And then Bobby walks Kathy home and invites her to the river later, because that's a good idea. Nothing bad happens up there. Lily walks home after work and when she goes over the train tracks, she gets spooked by a train because you couldn't hear that coming. Just a surprise. Casey's watching her because he's weird. He just follows everybody around. He's in a car accident and now he's mentally disabled and people just allow him to go out whenever he wants. She makes it home. She lives with her grandmother who's very annoying. So annoying, in fact, that you want her to die. But she never does. Back at the restaurant, Ramona deals with the worst cat scare. Like, because it's not scary. Jackson! Jackson! Damn cat, get back in here before you get your buns dirty. And then she has to avoid the laziest killer. The next day at the carnival, the teens are wandering around, and I have to ask, is a kissing booth legal? They're children. Thank you. We also keep going back to the river to see the bodies, and I like that the waters put her top back on, because it makes sense. Everybody's setting up the booths because they're all gonna sell stuff, because you know, they said they're only here for a couple of weeks, a lot of these kids, but they're still gonna work. I guess that's how it goes. A lot of the dialogue here though is very weird. I like the teacher Neil who's flirting with Lily. He's like, you need some help carrying that box? Let me lift it up. Oh, cool. It looks like it weighs nothing. Sure you don't need some help with the box? Sure. Lead on, look up. Didn't Kathy say you used to live here as a kid? Poor Ramona. Everybody keeps making slut jokes about her just because she sleeps with everybody. That doesn't mean she's a slut. She's probably just full of love and a very caring person. Everybody's planning on doing a party down at the river tonight. They'll have a fire and they'll go to the cemetery because that's going to be fun. And like I said earlier, this is actually 20 minutes of these kids going around a carnival, trying all the rides and just shit talking each other. Like, talk about filler. They do invite their teacher out to the fire who's on the fence because he's, you know, a teacher and not supposed to do that kind of thing. <sighs> that's a joke. Sarah's upset that she can't pick up the teacher at her booth. I mean, if you look at the wiki, they say that they're ex-girlfriend and boyfriend, but... A lot of that wiki is incorrect about where people work, um, who is who, so I would ignore wiki because they didn't watch the movie properly. Anywho, she takes some shaving cream to his car and just all over. So later she's outside of the carnival and she gets shot by an arrow. I wonder who did it. We are seeing Casey's watching, so good job Casey. Way to go get some help for her. She's doing all right though, a little bloody, but she manages to find an old carousel that's away from the carnival. 
and she sits on a horsey and falls asleep. But when she wakes up, she gets a plastic bag over her face. <laughs> You see Casey at home and he's talking to his mother and he's trying to explain the situation and he gets some life advice about different kinds of hurting. Like when a man is with a woman it's, it's hurting and it's wrong and when you take something and steal it's hurting and it's wrong. So that's weird. Lily's at home with grandmother and she tells her she knows. She knows. She died giving birth to you. But she was never married. That's not true. There's your father's picture in there on the mantel. Grandma, please. I know, I've known since we've taken that trip to Savannah when I was eight. Lily gets ready to sneak out to go to the fire. We see Grandma go to bed and she has a cleaver in her room. I mean, she has the attitude towards people to be the killer, but not the mobility. Teach is having a shower. Ramona shows up, just walks into his house, up into the shower, starts making out with him. He puts her in the shower and rejects her. Boy. <laughs> you bastard! It's the first honest thing you've said all night. And I'm not sure what this cheap thrills lines means, but it sounds bad, like incest bad. What's the matter? Not good enough for you? Whatever you say, maybe I'm just not into cheap thrills. I had a lifetime of that with my mother. The sheriff accosts her outside. And what the fuck kind of drama is this? You were in the car. Casey was driving the car. The accident's your fault. I guess what? We had a thinner experience here where she might have been fooling around with Casey and then the accident and Casey gets... Oh, I guess we're just setting up all the explanations for that. Well, Casey's uh, not at home when his mom's looking and just looking everywhere. Then she calls the sheriff who's at his office. But wasn't the sheriff just at Neil's, the teacher's house? So the editing is a little all over the place. Let's just be honest. Teach goes to the garage and we don't even see the sheriff anymore. So like, why did the sheriff go there? It's because the editing is bad and it'll get explained later, I guess. And a ball falls from above. So he goes up and investigates and we see him all surprised. And then we see a machete swing. So naturally, I'm assuming we just get some really bad implied kills here. <laughs> With a lot of these machete kills though, I have to ask why is there fresh blood on the machete before they swing and kill? The kids are at the river partying and the sheriff's making his rounds and he goes to the teacher's place. Oh, that makes sense. And he finds a body, but it's too dark. We can't make out which body he's found. So it's kind of weird. For most of the movie, we see one of the characters diddle just trying to hook up with any girl. So it was really weird when Wiki told me that he was Sandy's boyfriend. And then later, Sandy's just rejecting him constantly. And then finally, when she's got no other options, she's all like, yeah, let's fool around. And he passes out from drinking. Gets really odd later when he's not drunk anymore and he's just wandering around looking for Sandy. So Sandy said, screw this. Like everybody's just making out with everybody else. I'm just gonna go swimming by myself. So she gets naked and she goes swimming. We get a lot of shots of her swimming naked. And then she's just floating there, relaxing. And then the bodies. The two bodies from before float and bump right into her, which I thought was hilarious. And then she gets up and then she gets killed. <laughs> we did finally get some death screams, which I assume is the added audio of all this random screaming that wasn't being done by Sandy, but just kind of the atmosphere, which I liked, but didn't make any logical sense. And Diddle's up and about and everybody was making out and fooling around and getting ready to have sex, but now they're just sitting there talking to Diddle and be like, yes, let's go look for Sandy. They go looking, but then they stop looking because they run into Kathy and Bobby and Lily and decide, hey, let's go back to the fire and hang out. Then after like 30 seconds, they're like, let's go to the cemetery. Interesting music choice. Let's go. We left the warmth of the fire to go to the cold cemetery. Lily tells us a scary story, which I liked, but then they get rained on, so they go to this abandoned house. They actually said it's the Kennedy house of which they come down for the weekends and hang out, but it's bordered up, so nobody's there. And also there's apparently no bathroom on the inside because Diddle has to go to the outhouse where he sees a raccoon. I may be constipated for the rest of my life. Everyone decides that they're gonna go outside and scare Diddle, but naturally when they get there, he's hanging up dead. So they bring his lifeless body back into the house. 
Okay. Walker decides to run to his car and his girlfriend kind of trails behind him. By the time she gets there, well, he's already sitting in the car, dead. God, I thought you were Walker? <laughs> Honestly, who camera films a machete swing and counts that as an off-screen death? Well, she's dead, and another dude comes running out and sees the dead body, so he runs back, and he's running through the forest, and it's filled with death screams again, which is kind of cool. And he falls into a grave, and as he's trying to climb out, well, he gets his hands chopped off, and he falls back in. I guess that's enough. He'll bleed out from that, I'm sure. The killer is now doing a frontal assault on the house. No more sneaking around. So they decide to run upstairs and Ramona falls through the stairs and she's struggling and they're trying to pull her out and then someone's pulling her from underneath. So it's the killer just somehow got inside the house under the stairs. And then when they do pull her up, we get that she's in the half bit. How sharp is this machete? Seriously. <laughs> They manage to board themselves inside of a room, except, you know, Bobby gets stabbed in the leg because the killer just manages to put it through the wall, of course, because it's the sharpest machete ever. And then he breaks in and sees Lily and hesitates because he's just like, well, Lily, you're not a whore. Why are you hanging out with these people? But it's Neil, the guy we thought was dead because, of course, the way they showed it, it seemed like he was dead, like how they did it with everybody else, and they're dead, but not Neil. That's how they tricked you. It's not a surprise twist. It's they showed you he died in a way and then it's not but whatever we get a flashback of when neil was a kid and his mom's a stripper and she's walking down the stairs topless with some other girls i'll try to make sense of that later but no promises billy manages to grab broken glass and slice his throat which should be enough to kill him but he gets up and then the sheriff shows up outside and neil decides he's gonna lunch at lily and he completely misses and goes out the window and then he falls down and the sheriff sees him and shoots him in the face several times. Ah! Ambulances and some cops show up and Lily's all like, why? And the sheriff's all like, I don't know, let's get you home. And then Bobby and Kathy are sitting in the ambulance making out because our friends just got brutally murdered in front of us and you got a leg wound, but that just gets me in the mood. The end. Roll credits on the dead bodies floating in the river still. Just can't let that go, I guess. I wonder if anybody will ever find them. Well, they know where they are now. Or do they? So, I went to IMDb, I went to Wiki, I went to some other websites just trying to understand what exactly happened in this movie because the editing, a little all over the place, some scenes were here when they should have been here, it just didn't all add up. Why is Neil the killer? I don't get it. So Neil was a kid and his mom was a stripper and I guess that goes back to the line he told Ramona where it's just like, I don't like questionable women and stuff because his mom was a questionable woman, I guess. So that's his motivation for killing people. Mostly people that fool around. Well, I guess we wouldn't have any children then if people didn't fool around Neil. Jeez, Christ. But he really liked Lily, who was, I guess, older than everybody else because she worked at the store. She wasn't going off to college. Same with Ramona. Ramona worked in the restaurant, so I guess she wasn't the same age as everybody else, but everybody's an adult, let's just be honest. So yeah, Neil's motivation is everybody's a whore, I'm gonna kill them all. So, cool. I wish the movie like didn't make us feel like Neil was killed or did some sort of trick to make it make more sense. Cause it really just didn't make sense the way they're doing their bloody machete before the kill uh, kills. Like, yeah. Fix the editing guys. And the dialogue, all oh, the dialogue. Oh, that was a tough one. I don't know how I sat through it, because like nothing was happening. It was just a lot of like, man, oh, the campfire scenes. Like five minutes is sitting there at the campfire, maybe saying a few words. That's five fucking minutes. Like, ugh, do something. Do something in this movie. <laughs> I guess Casey was a big fan of the gym teacher, Neil, and uh, that's what
that's why he was following him around all the time and seeing all this stuff happen. But like he never, other than telling mom about the shaving cream, he never told anybody else about anything. We never really got a full explanation about kids. He's saying you kind of have to piece this thing together yourself almost. So in the end, Death Scream. I mean, it was watchable. Was it good? No, but maybe it's a life lesson of, uh, or a film lesson of how not to do a film. Like, oh, he's running around for 20 minutes at a carnival for no fucking reason. Seriously. <laughs> But I don't regret watching it. I just really wanted it to be better than this. But you know, yeah, you got your you got your gore, you got your boobs, so you you classify as a horror movie. Good on you. A lot of the actors though, well, they just stopped acting after this, which is always a great sign. Maybe they did one or two more. There's probably maybe three actors in this that actually just kept acting and other things. But yeah, I guess the casting was just like grab people for cheap and Say these lines, kids, and wander around. We'll film you and we'll call it a movie. We'll kill a few of you off later. Don't worry. Yeah. In the end, yeah, check this out if you want to be disappointed. There's worse movies out there, but there are better ones, too. So, thanks for watching.